Hey guys, how's it going? It's Infernament again. Welcome back to another video. And today I wanted to show you a brand new video. It's a tutorial video on how to make layouts for Pokemon randomizers, Nuzlocks, any playouts of any sort that you want to do on your channel. Sometimes I know that people get a little bit confused on when they are making their layouts. They don't know exactly what to make and they don't know how to make it good without taking much time. Well, this time I'm going to show you how I quickly make the basic forms of my layouts in Photoshop. The Photoshop version I am using is the most recent update as of this recording, which is 21.2.4. So if you have that version or later, if you're watching this later on, you should be good to go. And uh, of course, you're going to need to buy Photoshop if you don't have already, but this is just a quick tutorial on how to do it perfectly on Photoshop, well, as perfect as you can get. So. There are different ways you can do these layouts. Today I'm going to show you two different examples of layouts of mine. One is the Heart Gold Randomizer Nuzlocke, which is a series that's currently going on on my channel, and my Ultra Moon Randomizer Nuzlocke, which is a future series on my channel, which no one's seen the layout for yet, but I will show you that layout today. So, if you guys are excited for this tutorial, make sure you smash that like button, and I'm going to show you exactly what I do for these. So. My example today is going to be in a context of that you are planning to do a platinum playthrough. Not randomizer Nuzlocke, stuff like that. So what you're going to need, of course, is that top screen, the bottom screen, and face cam if you're going to use that face cam. Our example is going to say that you guys are using your face cam. Other things include badges, which is important because you got to show your progress in the game. The six Pokemon slots for the Pokemon on your team the death counter, and if you do them, the question of the day. I do questions of the day, of course, so I'm going to be showing you that. The first thing you're going to need to get down is the size of these layouts. Of course, the average, most of the time when you see a video on YouTube, the resolution is 1280 by 720. So you're going to need to take that new document, 1280 by 720. You're going to want to choose transparent because that's the easiest way to get images in there because you don't have to worry about that background layer. You can just have a tra transparent basically starting off as a PNG. So there is that blank background, and I am going to basically do what I do for these. So what you're going to want to do for the screens and such, the reason why the top screen is the most important is because, of course, that's where the gameplay goes, so you're going to want it to be the biggest as possible. The reason why you would want to use a reference for the sizes of the screens is because if you want to fit everything perfectly, you're going to want a specific size for that shape. And I don't mean how big it is, I mean how long and how tall it is. Now, while I can't tell you exactly what size these shapes are themselves, you can know exactly where you're going to want to create these shapes. So you're just going to want to go from the top left corner or the top right corner and if you're starting from the top left, you're going to want to go down to the bottom right and take that exact shape. So in this case, it's white. That's just the basic shape. So we'll put that in there. Now, you might be wondering, well, why are we putting that in first? Because, you know, you're going to want the actual backdrop of the layout, the thing that makes it different from everybody else's layout. Well, I actually have an image prepared that we are going to be using for that. So I will open that right now. Most of the time you're going to want to save the size of image that's going to be the same size as the backdrop. So this image is 1280-720. It just makes the resolution perfect. Of course, when you make an image smaller than it originally was, the resolution is going to get better. But if you make it bigger, it's going to get more blurrier. So you're going to want to take that rectangle layer of the top screen that we took and put it over. Also, if you want to change the color of whatever you have here, you can use the shape tool again and you can change the fill. It can be blue, black, cyan, white, whatever you want. Uh, we're going to choose black because, you know, that just seems like a better color to use in this situation. And if you're wondering where the top half above the screen is going to have more space than the bottom, that's because this is where we're going to be putting the question of the day, exactly where I have it um, on this heart gold randomizer Nuzlocke layer. So I'm going to delete that from there. Now, most of the time you're going to want another square behind it. So there, it's basically like there's a frame around it. 
And since we're doing it the way that I usually do them, we're going to take this square, move it a little bit over, so we can take the perfect size for the frame. So you can do exactly what you did for this one. Um, for this frame, I use the rounded rectangle tool instead of the regular rectangle tool, but you can just use the regular one as well. I decided it would look better with the rounded rectangle. But instead of showing you how to make the shape again, because you don't really need to sh be shown how to do it over and over again, we're just going to take it and we're going to put it basically where the other one was. Now, obviously it's in front of this, so you're going to want to do um, that basically just take the layer now it's not the perfect shape and you actually can't see all of it because of the way it's colored all right so I actually took a cut there because I wanted to show my whole screen so you can see everything there so now you can see all the layer styles here so of course there's many options you can do if you want to make this back one visible what I'd suggest is drop shadow so that makes it look like it's popping out like it's 3d you can mess with the opacity and stuff make it more visible you can change the spread which will spread the color that looks really bad of course but uh, you can just mess with that setting you can also change the size of it so you know how big it is and basically just mess around to make it look better I, I also do this for thumbnails and stuff such like that which speaking of which if you want a tutorial of how I make thumbnails as well show me that support down below and I will consider doing that because I am really interested in doing that as well for you guys. So that looks pretty good for what we have. If that's interesting at all to you, you can use that as well. Now just move the shape over a little bit and that looks like it's a proper proportion. You're going to want to have it around to look like it's just completely this, the right size. So that looks right about the same size. So you're going to want to repeat this process for the other screens. This is the face cam, of course, so we're just going to be dragging these as well. Um, putting them in a spot where it's pretty even with the top screen is a really good idea because it just goes better for design in general and doesn't look sloppy. So having them line up in the perfect size which, lucky for you, and the most recent versions of Photoshop, it gives you a pink line to let you know that it is in the right size. Now, if you're wondering why I have this one bigger than this, the face cam, of course, you might actually already be able to tell from the other layout, and it's because that's where I put the badges. We'll get to the badges later, so that will look like that for right now. We'll repeat the shadow process that we did earlier with the other white square so it's visible. And we'll repeat it one more time, line it up for the bottom screen. So now that you got the basic shape placements of where you're going to be having all of your screens and it all looks good in your opinion, we're going to move on to the next step, which is putting the death counter anywhere you want to, as well as this thing where all the Pokemon placements are, the badges, basically the extras of the layout. So starting off with the Pokemon shapes here, you're going to want to put that and a basic generic spot, I suggest having it like big enough so you, it's really easy to put the Pokemon in there and their proper sizes with good uh, as uh, revolutions when you actually edit the video together. So this size is a pretty good size. I'd say that my Pokemon look pretty good in my videos in the series. Pretty good resolution, not too big, not too small. People can actually see the Pokemon. And I have these shapes as well. Since they're not all in one shape, I won't go through the process of dragging them all in there, so let's just say that we don't have frames around these ones, and we'll put a drop shadow behind them so they're visible. So that, I don't know why I pressed the X. So that looks pretty good. Um, now that we got that, we can move on to the death counter. This is a shape I made myself, it's just a skull, generic for what you're going to show for your death counter. Nothing too big there, just putting the skull there, the X is re going to represent, you know, 
it's like a multiplication sign. It shows you how many deaths you have, which is pretty easy to figure out yourself. Uh, you can choose your own text for that. I chose this font that I use more often with my thumbnails if you're familiar with my content, which is the bold font. So adding in the number later is what I do. Like when I'm, uh, the, the editing program I use is a Microsoft app called Animatica. It's a Windows app called Animatica and it lets you put text over videos. It's basically a free version of Sony Vega or any other editing software you might use. Um, it costs $10 to remove the watermark, but it is a program that I highly suggest. I've been using it ever since I started making content. So now that we got all that down, the last pieces you're gonna need is the question of the day, if you have that, of course, to fit it in with the format of my layout, I ended up erasing the bottom of the text, but we're just going to end up putting that right here. So that's basically what I did to fit everything on there. It takes a little bit to figure out where you're going to want to put everything because once you have all those pictures there, you're going to want to figure out everywhere, like where to put everything else. Sometimes you're going to have to move it around just to make sure that everything fits on there if you have a bunch of things that you want to fit onto your layout. So this is the basic shape of the stuff on the layout. The final thing that you're going to want to add is the logo of your series. I just took the Pokemon Platinum logo because it's just basic. I didn't have to make one for you guys today. And the reason why I chose Pokemon Platinum is because I've already had a Platinum series on my channel. So making a layout for you guys is not, it's not that um, crazy of me making a Platinum layout. So there, that's basically like the end product of your layout. Now there, that isn't where it stops though. This is just basically um, the DS version of the layout. Now if you want inspiration for the layouts, for me, I just take big name YouTubers layouts, which is basically what the inspiration for these are. So these are very similar to big name PokeTubers layouts and such like that. Um, the last thing that you're going to want to do, of course, is adding the badges. So for the badges, what you're going to want to do is take this whole cutout shape here. It's It basically lets you select all of them. Of course, I didn't select all of the parts of the badges. And if your image is like this, you're just going to want to take that tool and take half of them, place them onto your layout, use Control-T to change the size of the image, and you can use the little squares to drag them down. So now that you have that, you might you might want to change the spacing of that too, which you can do with the same tool that you used to select the badges. But just to make sure that we can get them all on there, we're just going to use this tool, which the good thing about this is that you can just use the down key to move it so you don't have to create that shape again. It lets you select all the badges once again. So now that you got all the placements of the badges, you're going to want to shadow them out so that you can add the badges in later, just so people know that you don't have the badges yet, of course, because at the beginning of the game, you, of course, won't have the badges. So you're going to want to go to those layer styles again, once again, double clicking on the layer, and you're going to want to choose color overlay. You can even do gradient overlay as well if you just want to use a gradient so it looks cooler just to match, you know, the colors of the background or whatever. So those are two options you can do. I just suggest using color overlay as, you know, just a basic black option. So obviously it doesn't look the best right now, but you can change the way that it looks yourself later on using the different tools that you have here. The easiest one, of course, like I said before, is this one just to make sure that they're all lined up and looking perfect and such. So this is the basic design of a DS looking one. You could take a screenshot of the current what you're currently seeing on your screen so you can use it as inspiration for what you're doing and just to give you another example if you're doing a 3ds series this is my ultra moon one that will be coming in a future series this is the top screen these are my six pokemon this is the bottom screen i put the z crystals above the bottom screen the question of the day under the face cam and another thing you can do is adding your social links up there I have YouTube, of course, it might seem silly to have your YouTube thing when they're watching it on YouTube, but if your clips are shared on YouTube, I mean, if your clips are shared on Twitter or anything else like that, it's a good idea so people can know where to find your channel. 
And of course, I put the logo down here because I thought it would look better than putting it up here like my other logos. Putting it right here is a perfect spot, in my opinion. So yeah, those are basic examples of what you can do for certain layouts. I hope this video is useful. I hope this video is useful for you guys because I really wanted to make it. Just because, you know, when I first started, I didn't know what to do with layouts either, and I really needed a tutorial, but there weren't any good ones out there, so I basically self-taught myself, and since I taught myself, I thought I'd teach you guys what I've learned from myself, and I think I've gotten a lot better with layouts. Sometimes you might even want a different background, um, and you can definitely find some really good artists out there to commission for these certain things. My Ultra Moon layout backdrop was actually commissioned by someone from Twitter. I got it. Um, I won it in a contest that they were running on their Twitter. I'll even leave the link to their Twitter down in the description if you want to check them out or if you want to consider commissioning them in the future. So that's going to do it for this tutorial, guys. I might, like I said earlier, I might do another tutorial for how I make thumbnail designs. Um, if you want to see that, smash the like button. Let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. So if you did enjoy, once again, leave a like. Um, subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. Ring that notification bell so you get notified about future uh, videos and other videos like Nuzlocks and stuff like that on my channel. This is Inferno Man Burning Out, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.